Hello everyone and welcome back to another beginner Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be going over the basics of modeling inside a Blender, a few tools you, you should know that will help you make some models. I have some tutorials already covering some very basic models and there will be more in the future so you can watch those after this if you want more practice with models. So the first thing I'm going to do is press shift A on the keyboard so just shift and then A and then hover over mesh here and select cube. Then I'm going to drag in here with the zoom, move with the hand and I can see my cube clearly now. I'm going to left click on this drop down and turn off move because I want to see what I'm working with and I've clicked off my object so I'm just going to left click it again to select it. Now I'm going to press tab to enter edit mode and you can see here I have a few different options so I have vertex select which allows me to select these individual points edge select which can be accessed with the two key which allows me to select this whole edge here and face select which can be accessed with the three key which can be used to select the whole face i didn't mention it so just keep in mind if you want to select the individual points the hot key for that is one so i'm going to demonstrate this with face select mode so just press free on the keyboard or click this button here and i'll select this face the first tool i'm going to show you is a tool called the inset tool and that allows you to do this so I'll press I on the keyboard, and as you can see, it's creating a new face in this mesh. Now, why might you want to do this is because now I can move this face separately, and now you, you can see I've got a little bit more of a different mesh going on here than just the cube. Compare that to if I just move this one face without insetting, you can see this moves the mesh in a different manner. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to press Ctrl Z and move that square back to where it was. I'm going to show you another important tool for modeling. This is called the extrude tool and we access it by pressing E on the keyboard. Once I press E, by default it's just going to extrude across the normal and when I'm satisfied with its placement I'll just press left click and you can see what I could do here. I could press I again to inset and then I could press E again to extrude this out. It could also come and select this face, press I to inset and I can also press E and I can then press Y and then as you can see now I'm like moving that face another direction and it's extruding out this mesh. Press Ctrl Z to undo that. If you undo too much just press Ctrl Shift Z to redo. Obviously the same applies if I press E and X. I can now extrude off the X axis and E and Z. Now as you can see if I bring this object down or this face down it will extrude inward and now I have a, a hole in my object. So I'll show you that again. So I'll just select the face, press I, left click when I'm happy with it press E and then Z and rather than bring it up, I can bring it down and now I've got a hole in my object. So you can kind of see what I can do with these tools here. Another thing I can do is with this face selected, I can right click and then press subdivide. And now you can see that square has now been turned into four new squares. Now I'm going to show you a special tool you can use inside a Blender. So what I'm going to do is left click on edit, go on preferences, I'm going to click on add-ons. And then in the search bar, I'm going to left click it and I'm just going to search loop tools. If it doesn't come up, make sure you have this official and community box blue. So just left click it to change it. And I'm going to make sure this box here with loop tools is clicked. So as you can see, this is it off and this is it on. Make sure you have this auto save preferences on, but you can also just press save preferences by left clicking this. And then I can just press X. Now I'm going to select my faces. So I'll select one hold down shift to select multiple and now i'm going to press i on the keyboard and inset it now rather than make this indent here which i've done on these other squares i'm going to make this a sort of circle shape so to do that i'll press right click then hover over loop tools which is enabled by this add-on then i will click circle and now you can see i've got this this more circular shape so i'll just press e and now you can see i've brung a sort of pipe up. Now obviously this doesn't look like a super smooth cylinder but we'll have some tools where we can change that in a bit. Now if I want to select multiple things in my object I can use the alt, alt left click to select loops. Keep in mind if you have the emulated free button mouse on this tool won't work so you will need to use double left click instead. So just hold down alt and then left click this and as you can see that selected that loop. In face select mode, free on the keyboard, I can now press S and then shift Z to scale on the X and Y and I can bring that in and make that pipe a bit smaller. I can also make it a bit bigger. As you can see, make sure you need to, you press S and then shift Z so it keeps on the 
X and Y axis only. Another tool I can use to select in Blender is the Paint Select tool. So to access that, I can just press C on the keyboard and this shape will come up. Then I can left click and it will select all these planes. Now if I turn around, you will find that all these planes here aren't selected. And that's obviously because they weren't in my field of view over here. However, if I wanted to select the planes which I couldn't see, all I would need to do is turn on this toggle x-ray here. And now when I press C and select, you can see it's selecting all these planes through the object as well. So that's something to keep in mind. So I'll turn that off. Another thing to keep in mind when using the paint tool is if I'm selecting and then I right click, it will save it there. But then when I press undo, it will undo all of my selection, not just the last plane I click. So keep that in mind. Though I'm sure you'll get familiar with this tool the more you use it. Now I'm going to press tab and go into object mode. And I'm going to make our object look a little bit nicer. So the first thing I'm going to do is left click on this modifier property. And I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier. Now at first you can see that this object looks really different. For some people you might think uh, this is much cooler. But in Blender we want to make sure we get a desired result. So to fix this I'm going to press tab and enter edit mode. I'm then going to turn on this toggle x-ray so I can see my edges. And I'm going to press 2 to enter edge select mode. Then I'll press alt and left click on this loop. And if I zoom in, or in fact if I turn off toggle x-ray, and I pr press control B to bevel, you'll find that now it's looking a little bit more like a cylinder. The same applies if I do it at the top here. So if I select all these faces, and then go into edge select mode, control select these ones, and press control B, you'll find it's making a cylinder up here as well. This also works with the loop cut tool, so to do that press control R, then left click and you can drag that up. And if you might have been able to guess, if I select these faces and press I, I can also get a similar result as with the loop cut. However, I'm not going to use that tool because there is an other tool we can use inside of Blender. So I'll toggle my x-ray again and I'm going to select all these edges here and here. So to do that, I'll press alt left click on this one and then shift alt on this one. I might need to select these individually since this isn't registered as a loop for some reason. Then I'm going to change this mean crease value here to 1. And now if I come out of x-ray mode, you can see this is the result we've had. If I want to preview what my object looks like without the subdivision surface, I can turn on this button here and we'll see what the original looked like again. So that's before and after. I can also I can also make my cubes look more like cubes again. So to do that, I can just press Alt and then left click, then Shift Alt, left click, then I can hold down Shift to select individual edges. I'm just gonna select all these ones which I want to select. So I'll be back when I'm done. All right, so as you can see, I've selected quite a few of these edges now. And I also selected the inside of this box here because that's going to need to be mean creased as well. So I'll turn my mean crease value up and you can see as I increase it, it gets more like a cube. So I'll put it up to one and as you can see, some sort of issue has happened over here. To fix that, I'll just need to select these individual edges here just by pressing shift and left click. And I'll turn my mean cre crease back to one and that's fixed that up. Maybe a few shading anomalies here and there. Uh, I'll just need to make sure this one's selected and I can turn my crease back to one. And there we go, that's looking a lot nicer now. Selecting these edges as well, and we can set these to one. And as you can see, I am now fixing up this topology and making it look a lot nicer. So I'll press this overlay button so I can see my object over all those lines. And as you can see, this one's not had any mean crease on, but this one, this one, and this one has. And this is essentially the result we get. So if you want, you can come back in and add the mean crease on all these edges, have a play about with it, and try and get used to how the tools work. I'm gonna come back into object mode and I'm going to right click and I'm going to press shade smooth and this may look horrible now but once I change a few settings it's going to look a lot nicer. So the first thing I'm going to do is come down to my object data properties which is just this green triangle make sure your object is selected and I'm going to under normals open up this menu and left click auto smooth and that's looking a lot nicer. This one might look a little funny and that's because it's not a simple geometry like the rest of these are but you can play around with these settings just by changing this angle so you can see that change and it becomes when i put it to zero it's as if the object hasn't shaded smooth at all if you want to restore it to how it was before without changing this auto smooth value i can right click and press shade flat and now it's back to how it was but i'm going to keep it on shade smooth finally i'm going to show you a few more cool little tools you can use so i'm going to click this here 
press E and then Z and bring that across. I'm actually going to turn my subdivision surface off because I don't want to keep changing these crease values just now, I'm just some tools. And I'm going to press Alt, left click here, X and then face it. And now you can see that this face has been left on its own. I'm going to show you a special tool which will allow me to connect these again. So I'll left click one of these edges and then I'll left click this one and then I can press F. And as you can see, that's added a face back. Another thing to keep in mind, if I select this face, then press E to extrude, and I want to connect these two faces together, one thing I can do is go back into edge select mode with two on the keyboard, alt left click this, and then press F, and now it's a face. And then I'm gonna come into face select mode with three, select this face, select this face, and in edge select mode, I'll right click and then press bridge edge loops. And now let's join that together. Now how that's different from the the F button on the keyboard is, as you can see, if I press this X-ray, and actually I'll zoom so I'm inside the object and then turn X-ray off, you can see there's no faces here now. It's removed those faces and joined things together. So that can be really handy for keeping nice clean topology. Last two I'm gonna show you for today's video. I'm gonna come back into face select mode, and I'm gonna select all these faces with shift left click. Then you will notice if I press E, it can only extrude in one direction. Now that might be pretty problematic for some people. So what I'm actually going to do is hold down Alt and then press E. Alt E and then extrude individual face. And now you can see I'm bringing out these faces individually. Also, if you want to get rid of this edge, which isn't matching up with this face here, you can left click that edge, right click and press dissolve edges. And that will remove it without changing the topology much. Do be careful with that tool because sometimes it might mess something up. But you can always press Ctrl Z if that happens. So that's our very strange topology made and I think that's me explained most of the basic modeling tools that you can use. I want to thank you all for watching this video and I hope you all found it useful. Make sure to check out my beginner tutorial playlist if you want to see more tutorials and of course you can always subscribe if you want to be updated when I make new videos. Although you may need to press the notification bell if you want to be notified. That's pretty much it and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you again and I'll see you later.